This is a clinical demonstration of the lapoplasty procedure for three-plane hallux valgus correction utilizing the lapoplasty system 2 implants. This case example is a moderate bunion deformity with frontal plane rotation. The surgical approach begins with a direct dorsal incision just medial to the EHL tendon. The incision extends from the proximal pole of the cuneiform to the mid-shaft of the first metatarsal. Dissection is carried directly down to the TMT joint and periosteum. Create a small pocket for the fulcrum, proximally between the first and second metatarsal. Expose plantarly to access the medial metatarsal ridge. The sagittal saw is then inserted into the TMT joint and then powered on to plane the medial, lateral, and plantar flare of the metatarsal, flattening the joint surfaces for congruent frontal plane rotation. An osteotome is then used to release any remaining plantar ligament connections. After releasing the TMT joint, insert a small joystick pin approximately one centimeter from the base of the first metatarsal to check for adequate rotation. In many cases, a lateral release is carried out through a small interspace incision. A lateral capsulotomy is performed. In addition to a release of the lateral sesmoidal ligament, manual manipulation of the hallux confirms the release. While holding the foot stable, rotation with the joystick pin is then checked under fluoro to ensure that full frontal plane rotation can be achieved. Note that the metatarsal lateral round sign is eliminated when the metatarsal is returned to neutral rotational alignment. Apply pressure to the metatarsal head to confirm complete reduction of the deformity. Insert the fulcrum as far proximal as possible between the base of the first and second metatarsals. The cut guide is used as a reference for the incision over the second metatarsal for the positioner tip. Create a percutaneous incision and bluntly dissect the soft tissue. Insert the tip of the positioner and apply the cup to the medial ridge of the first metatarsal. Use the joystick pin to rotate the metatarsal while the positioner is applied. Fluoro is then used to confirm complete reduction of the triplanar deformity. Check the lateral view to confirm the metatarsal is not elevated. A smooth pin is then inserted through the positioner to secure the correction. The joint seeker is placed in the TMT joint to set the sagittal plane alignment of the cut guide. It is oriented straight dorsal and placed as far lateral as possible. The cut guide is then placed over the joint seeker confirming that it's aligned with the long axis of the metatarsal. Smooth pins are then inserted into the most proximal and distal holes to secure it in place. And a third angled pin is used to prevent migration of the cut guide. After removing the joint seeker, fluoro can be used to confirm that appropriate cuts will be made. With the triplanar correction held in place, the 40 mm saw blade is used to make precision metatarsal and cuneiform cuts through the cut guide slots. The saw should be kept vertical to avoid cutting into the second metatarsal, and the saw blade should be bottomed out against the cut guide to reach the plantar cortex. The offset pin is then removed, and the cut guide is lifted off the parallel pins which are left in place for the compressor. An osteotome is then used to free up the bone slices. Note that the lapoplasty cut guide ensures corrective cuts are made with minimal bone removal, virtually eliminating the risk of excessive shortening. Next, the compressor is applied over the parallel cut guide pins. Although not shown in this video, 10 degrees of extra frontal plane rotation can be achieved by using the 10 degree metatarsal and 0 degree cuneiform holes. Distract the compressor device to open up the TMT joint for improved visualization and access. 
a pituitary or synovial rangure can be helpful for removing any remnant bone fragments. Floral views down the TMT joint can be used to confirm complete removal of bony fragments. It is recommended that the joint surfaces are aggressively fenestrated with a fluted drill bit to remove any residual subchondral bone and expose additional bleeding bone for healing. All of the bone bits should be left in the fusion site as autograft bone. After preparing the joint surfaces, tighten the compressor. The precision cut surfaces should compress together like puzzle pieces. Note that it is recommended to insert the thin end of the fulcrum during the compression step. Confirm uniform TMT joint apposition by checking down the joint line, AP, and lateral floral views. To insert the lapoplasty interfrag screw, start the guide wire across the lateral side of the TMT joint, noting the depth markings. Confirm the trajectory on fluoro. Use the cannulated countersink on the lateral cortex and then insert the cannulated compression screw across the TMT joint. Insert a second point of fixation across the medial side of the joint and remove a pin from the compressor to slide it off. For optimal mechanical stability, the dorsal biplanar plate is placed across the lateral aspect of the TMT joint, contoured such that its ends are touching bone. Small olive tacks are used to hold the plate in the desired position. Confirm lateral placement, checking that the proximal screws will not be in the intercuneiform joint space. A long olive drill is used to drill through the empty drill guides, which are then removed. The four locking screws are then placed with 12 mm magenta screws in the metatarsal and 14 mm gold screws in the cuneiform. A medial biplanar plate is then placed across the TMT joint such that its screw trajectories will be perpendicular to the screws in the dorsal plate. Locking screws are then inserted in the same sequence as the dorsal plate. Fluoro is used to confirm the triplanar correction, apposition of the joint surfaces, and biplanar plate placement. If intercuneiform instability is suspected, a transverse screw can be placed across the intercuneiform joint. Confirm the screw length and guide wire trajectory on fluoro. Drill to the first laser mark line and insert the cannulated screw. Confirm the final three-plane anatomic correction on AP view, lateral view, and axial view.